<laughs> so about a month ago on April 1st, Scythe, a programmer and reverse engineer known for his fan mods in the Sonic community, released a meme mod that replaced Sonic with Super Mario from the beloved classic Super Mario 64. Except, this isn't a skin or anything of the sort, he was literally able to port the controls and physics from said game into Sonic Generations. And as soon as I discovered it was deemed not beatable, I decided to take on the mantle myself to see whether it's actually possible to beat the entire game using this mod. Because of the surprising length of this project, we'll be splitting this challenge into two parts. For part one, we'll be covering the classic stages only, with part two tackling the modern stages. It just makes sense for me to structure the challenge in this way, as it makes the workload overall more manageable, and can provide a fast, smoother viewing experience as opposed to bulking everything together and having to constantly switch from one playstyle to another. But before we begin, if you love Sonic content or challenge videos in general, and want to see more content like this on the channel, do me a favour and smash the subscribe button, like the video and hit that naughty bell. We are now on the road to 2k subscribers by the end of the year, and any help to hit that goal is truly appreciated. Now I'm quickly going to go over the rules of this challenge, to set the groundwork of what is and what isn't allowed. First of all, the challenge begins in Green Hill and is concluded upon the completion of Planet Wizard 1. Next, I am only allowed to use the features that are included within the mod itself, meaning I'm not allowed to cheat in any way, shape or form using an external cheat engine. We're only allowed to use the features included with this mod to clear the challenge. And finally, yes, this run will have glitches, and a lot of them at that. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight in. Our journey begins in the stage that practically started it all, Green Hill Act 1. And right off the bat, you'll notice a lot of things that would just never cross your mind when playing through this game normally, such as how long some of these stages actually are. With Sonic's natural speed, they can appear rather short, clearing most in only a few minutes. However, with a character of Mario's stature, expect to waste a lot of time simply long jumping over long strips of road, and various obstacles that would truly test a jumpman's abilities, to the point that some stages can actually take over 20 minutes to simply complete. Given the Act 1s and Generations are the classic stages, you'd expect Mario will only be capable of moving either to the left or right, when in actuality he still maintains full 3D controls in a sense. Don't get me wrong, if you try to move off the actual stage, you'll be stopped by an invisible wall, but if you've ever played the Klonoa series of games, where by either moving up or down on the D-pad, Klonoa will face the play in order to interact with collectibles on the 3D plane, so it's pretty similar to that I'd say. If you've played any other 3D Mario game, then you'll pretty much know what to expect with this mod. Mario can jump, slide and even punch his way to the goal. The only major difference that I've noticed, aside from using the ring mechanic as opposed to having a standard health bar, is that Mario can no longer damage enemies for his jump. If you try, he'll simply be repelled and lose his rings. To clear the way, you have to hit the banics with his various combat options, such as the punch, dive and even stomp. In all honesty, you'll quickly adjust to this change only after a few minutes of play, but it's still kind of weird considering he was actually capable of jumping into his falls in the original Super Mario 64. The journey to the fish spring that propels us up to the next section of the stage was rather uneventful even with Mario's vulnerabilities. Nothing here really impedes into any significant degree. The path, whilst long, is easy to trek through spamming the long jump, and even the curved ramps that Sonic would normally need to spin dash up were shallow enough for Mario to just kind of clip through it with a triple jump. When we encounter a split path consisting of a top and bottom route, at first I did take the top path by accident only to be led to a loop. With Sonic all you need to do is garner a bit of speed to travel through, but unfortunately Mario is simply incapable of building up that much momentum, meaning there is no way for him to travel through the loop without the aid of some sort of dash pad. In the end I backtracked to the curved pipes in the walls that we would normally need to roll through, which is clearable with Mario just… it takes a while, because of the fact he has to crawl through the small space otherwise he'll get stuck within the pipe. Expect this to be a common occurrence throughout this challenge run. Things were going remarkably well so far, so of course I had to go and mess it up, by long jumping over the spring taking us back to the very beginning of the stage. On the second attempt we actually make sure Mario touches the spring, taking us to the next half of the stage. A piece of advice I have for you is that whatever you do, always hold the direction that the spring pushes you towards when bouncing off them. For some reason the momentum gained from the spring screws the mod up a lot, as if you hold any other direction Mario will be pushing that direction instead with the momentum gained from the spring itself. It's a real easy way to die through no fault of your own. The rest of that one really isn't worth mentioning, as long as you're able to stay along the top path like we were able to, there was a wooden loop that did have me a little worried at first. However, it is automated so Mario is able to run through it just fine. That is until we reach the next checkpoint along the wooden bridge. The path ahead is just beyond this reverse ramp that we would normally need to spin dash through. Mario has no way of building up enough speed to clear it, and any attempt to somehow wall jumping against the curve to propel him upward only ended in failure. I was almost about to call this stage unbeatable until I accidentally activated the wing cap by pressing the B button. Yes, Mario has his wing cap in this mod toggleable by the press of the B button, and it works identically to its 64 counterpart. One interesting thing about it though is that if you hit the wall, all whilst gliding, instead of halting, the wall will simply push Mario in the other direction, meaning by triple jumping into the ramp, we were able to gain enough height to reach a higher platform, once Mario's direction changed upon contacts. 
pretty cool, right? And yet again, thanks to the wind cap, we have more than enough height to avoid the buzz bomber, hitting the spring to reach the final part of the stage. With the goalpost beyond this final loop and corkscrew, it seems we might have finally reached our limb. Hey, that's cheating! Actually, it isn't. Remember the rules I set out for us at the very beginning. I can only use the features provided by the mod itself. And in this case, that's exactly what I'm doing. You see, by holding both the shoulder buttons in a 2D section, this will allow Mario to go out of bounds until you let go. Upon releasing the combination, he'll be snapped back into the second dimension, relative to both his height and positioning before releasing. So by triple jumping into a glide, we're able to simply weave around the loop to snap him back onto the pathway once we're past it. We also had to do this with the corkscrew as Mario just doesn't have enough speed to blast through it. It is all awkward as the camera really isn't on your side here, and gaining altitude with the wind cap has always been a bit tricky, but with that we cleared the first act of Green Hill. Now my biggest fear coming into Chemical Plant Act 1 were the godly amount of loots present in the original version of the stage. Since the Act 1's in generations do borrow somewhat from the source material, elements such as the Helix Pathways and the Acid Water do appear. The Helix Pathways weren't too difficult as long as you didn't jump until you reached the height of the slope. Because of Mario's abysmal speed, it's entirely possible to slow down enough to the point that the game will force Mario into a slide taking him right back down to the bottom. Like an idiot, I somehow jumped over a dash pad along the final slope of this first section and thought we were pretty much screwed as Mario couldn't clear this loop on his own. Praise be to Dimps though, the dash pad does give us enough momentum to clear this loop, and with the second dash pad helping Mario through the second loop, we are able to reach the next section. Interestingly enough, Mario is actually capable of using the pipes placed throughout the stage. Like Sonic, we need to destroy the lid by jumping into it, only in this case we've got to use the ground pound. This leads us to yet another dash pad. Unfortunately, it doesn't give Mario enough speed to stick to the upper path, and upon oh. crashing into the floating blocks we're forced back down to the lower route. Whilst it sucks, Mario really proved his versatility when it came to pure platforming, to the point that I almost forgot we were even playing a Sonic game, only to be brought back down to reality the moment we reached the ramp after clearing another loop. In general, when you reach an obstacle like this with Mario, just know that more often than not, the height Mario is able to garner for his triple jump is usually enough to reach the higher platforms. You may have to backtrack a bit to get a starting run up, but you have more than enough space to pull this off here. From this point, Chemical Plant really begins to show why Mario isn't built for this sort of design, and it all starts the moment we reach the next 2D section. On the surface, it looks rather simple, which it is to be fair. You just have to platform onto the higher ledge whilst avoiding the blue goo things. You can do this by simply backflipping. However, I am guilty for overthinking, and instead tried to use the wall to the left to wall jump over. Due to the amount of time I wasted here, the purple water below caught up with us submerging Mario, and whilst yeah he can swim, Mario's controls become extremely wonky as the game will behave like he's in a 3D space, even in this 2D section, meaning if you hold up with the intent of swimming higher, he will instead swim forward against the invisible wall, and since he can drown just like Sonic, if you get stuck in the water it's essentially game over. For some reason though, eventually the water stops affecting Mario altogether, returning him to his normal state, giving us the opportunity to reach the air bubble with a few seconds to spare. I have no idea why this is the case, but it did happen a few times over the course of this challenge at random intervals. The backwards flip really came in clutch here, allowing us to platform over the moving blocks with relative ease, and with that we were able to reach the red spring, propelling us out of the water to safety. Thank goodness. The final obstacle standing in our way was a gigantic ramp that would usually take us over a row of spikes. For classic Sonic, it's simply a matter of spin dashing up and allowing his speed to carry him through. For Mario though, even though we can reach the top by using the ramp and the wall to the right to wall jump, there's no way to avoid the spikes that will actually push us back, oftentimes all the way back down to the start of the ramp. So that means we're pretty much stuck, right? Well, no actually. It is possible to clear this section and reach the goalpost, it's just a bloody nightmare. To put it simply, we need to wall jump up, but on the very last jump we need to make sure Mario leaks far enough to the right, so when he takes damage from the spikes, he won't be pushed back. If you do this right, all you need to do is damage reach your way through, making Act 1 actually possible. Out of all the stages you had to pick from, they choose Sky Sanctuary. Am I alone in the sense that this was such a missed opportunity? Out of all the stages in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, this isn't the one that stands out to me as iconic in the slightest. All in all though, nothing in that one really impeded our progress until the very end of the stage. Mario can interact with all the gimmicks here such as the clouds, the floating trembles that we need to use to cross large distances, and the red glowing orbs that propel us upwards. Mario can do it all. It just takes far longer for him to reach again due to his slower speed. The trouble arises during the very last set piece. Upon hitting the spring, we need to dash up the curved road that continuously collapses underneath us, and this is unfortunately impossible for Mario to cross because of his minuscule running speed. Thankfully, there is a way to clear this by skipping the tower completely. All we have to do is triple jump to activate the wind cap at the final checkpoint, and we have just enough height to reach the top of the tower where the red springs are. By ground pounding directly above the spring, this will push us to the goalpost, completing Act 1 of Sky Sanctuary. You know what? I'll take back what I just said. I love this stage, man. Now, the first zone of the adventure era stages centers around the iconic speed highway, and I have to be honest, going forward 
with the design of the classic stages progressively become more and more platform heavy and blocky to an extent. This honestly makes them a far better fit for Mario and his ability specifically, however Speed Highway does pose quite a few challenges mainly thanks to the amount of loose without the dash pads and the giant ramps that he has no way of running along. From the start you need to take the top pathway, otherwise Mario has no way of dashing through the loop without the dash pad. We take an L here as the spring pushes Mario right into the spikes resulting in a death. So be sure to collect some rings if you don't want to get bodied here. Throughout the stage you have two variants of floating platforms. The normal ones that we can stand on with no issues. Or the yellow and red variants that will gradually begin to shake and eventually collapse underneath you if you stay on them for too long. Fortunately Mario has enough jump height to reach the next section before this happens. Playing the game of chicken across the various traffic filled highways. Taking the rocket into one of the buildings, we're forced into backwards jumping across the rising platforms to reach the next section. The amount of interaction Mario has here is surprisingly deep. I didn't mention this in Chemical Plant Act 1, however obstacles such as the glass and barrels blocking our path can be clear with Mario's melee options, so he never really feels too out of his depth here, as we drop down to reach the checkpoint. Thanks to the blocky design of this next section, we're able to clear without any problems, discovering that if you hit a dash pad on a loop, even if the dash pad is too high for Mario to run into, it will still push him forward regardless. This made it possible to clear the loop despite it taking a few tries, to not clip through the roof of the collision. Whilst we did have some issues here with the junk prevalent with the mod itself, nothing else in that one really halted our progress. That is until the very end of the stage where we're essentially softlocked into this half pipe. There is a brief platforming section at the top that will lead us onto the final road just ahead leading to the goalpost. It's just that Mario cannot reach this section by any means. After a while I was able to clip out a bounce using the bumper combination and the wing cart to lead Mario to the final spring clearing the stage. This might take you a little while because there is an invisible wall here that you can easily hit, taking you all the way back down to the lower section that you've already cleared. Regardless, it is possible to clear Act 1 of Speed Highway. Continuing on with the platform heavy design, see Escape Act 1 in a lot of respects doesn't really feel like a classic Sonic stage at all. There aren't many loops or curved ramps for us to really take advantage of that classic speed, and so the journey up to the first checkpoint was actually pretty easy, only being behind classic Sonic by about 20 seconds. Whilst that does sound like a lot, you have to keep into perspective their speed difference. So in that sense, it just speaks volumes to how much this stage layout actually complements our boy over here. I must have jinxed us however as right after the first checkpoint, we are forced up a ramp to reach the first gun chase sequence of the stage. This ramp is just too steep for Mario to climb up, so at first I thought this might have been the end of Act 1. We tried using the ramp itself and the wall to the left to the wall jump, it's just that the structure on our left didn't have any collision so we couldn't use it as a wall. Any attempts at using the wing cap also failed as we somehow got stuck in one of the walls and so we were forced to restart when we couldn't get out. In the end we were able to reach the top by clipping through the road itself, but this had an unintended side effect as the camera panned the wrong way causing it to clip through the building. Also the gun truck wasn't chasing us for some reason, allowing us to reach the next section pretty easily thankfully. For some reason we couldn't find a way to pass the loop the higher up dash pad, as Mario just continuously clipped through the roof of it. At one point landing out of bounds where it pretty much became impossible to actually get him back onto the stage itself. Using the wing cap allows us to clip out of bounds but also stay high enough in the air to pretty much avoid the gun truck completely, that's destroying the road and the lower pathway. When we reach the platforming section we have to scale the scaffolding pretty quickly, otherwise the gun truck will emerge from above and collapse the entire thing. Now this is rather tense with Sonic himself, but even so we were just about able to reach the top, discovering that we couldn't actually make use of the skateboard, forcing us to run down the lift of the road instead. The final portion of the act yet again centres around the gun truck. Once we've hit the spring, Mario will be forced to flee from his pursuer and use the scaffolding to reach the final row before the entire thing collapses. The thing is, Mario can't outrun the gun truck. Unlike the adventure games where the set pieces correspond to your speed, making them easy to cheese if you intentionally move at a slower pace, in generations they simply don't give a fuck. Right away taking major damage as the truck crushes every bone in the poor plumber's body. Once it moves away though, we're given some time to scale the scaffold before it returns to finish the job. As long as you scale the less side it's a lot easier to reach a solid platform that we can then use to glide from with the wing cap. From here all that we needed to do was survive the final gun chase upon hitting the launch pad. As expected the truck crushed Mario once again, however it continued moving uninterrupted, leaving Mario behind so we were actually able to clear the stage, as the truck was long gone by the time he actually reached the goalpost, making it possible to clear Act 1. The vinyl zone of the Dreamcast era stages is Seaside Hill, and to be honest this is probably my favourite stage in the entire game. I was never really a fan of the original Seaside Hill, as I'm a bit of an Ocean Palace guy myself, and I think that's why I love this variation so much. It isn't so much Seaside Hill as it is a fusion of both stages, and that's honestly really cool to think about. I was rather surprised to see just how straightforward the first half of Act 1 was, just as long as we remained on the top path with the wing cap. Whilst there are a bunch of obstacles in the form of spikes and those platforms that will collapse underneath you, nothing is more annoying than the godly amount of water present in both acts. 
So my strategy, for a lack of a better term, was to pretty much avoid the water at all costs. Unfortunately though, something happened when we clipped through one of the loops leading up to the underwater segment. Somehow we fell out of bounds in the 2D section into this pseudo 3D space, where Mario could still move around in all directions, apart from where we actually had to go because of the invisible wall. Yet the bumper combination to go back in bounds still worked as it was technically a 2D space. It's so bizarre, but once I figured out that we were still technically in the 2D space, we just had to clip back into bounds and hit the spring with this weird camera angle. Instead of slapping Mario back onto the intended path upon releasing the combination, the game would instead push him back out of bounds, meaning we had to keep hold of the combination until we got out of here. Eventually we did, however the camera angle left a lot to be desired as it was hanging onto a piece of collision all the way back where we fell out of bounds, taking damage as a result. Somehow we did hit the next checkpoint, so at that point we allowed Mario to get bodied, so that we could respawn in the final section of the stage. Standing between Mario and the goalpost is the infamous boulder chase of Ocean Palace, and just like most other set pieces in Generations, they do not give a damn how fast or slow you're going. This time though, it's a good thing for us as this is honestly extremely easy to cheese. By stopping intentionally and allowing the first boulder to pass you, we can simply make our way to the goal without any interruptions. For the remaining boulders, if you use the wing cap, we can pretty much climb over them and the oncoming platformer sections to reach the goal and clear Act 1 with relative ease. Can I just take a moment to say how cool it is for them to actually acknowledge 06 by giving it a stage in the game? I know the whole point of Generations is to celebrate the 20 years of the franchise, however given their fear for anything 06 or adventure related in the current time period, I'm happy that they at least gave it a chance to shine here, as the reason for 06's failings was not level design related by any means. Having 4 city levels in the game is a bit overkill though, I would have much preferred Kingdom Valley, but that's just me. Now the further we get from the classic area stages, the easier the Act 1 variations become ironically enough. One thing that I've noticed throughout this challenge is that the classic stages slowly phase out elements you'd see in Green Hill and the like. Loops are becoming few and far between in favour of more traditional platforming. Even most of the ramps here have another wall that we can jump off. Crisis City Acts 1 especially honestly feels like a stage that you will see in a 2D Mario game. It shocks me just how at all Mario felt here in comparison to some of the previous stages. The only thing that we really needed to watch out for was the godly amount of fire. If you know anything about Super Mario 64, you'd know that if Mario takes fire damage for whatever reason, they'll start running forward in any given direction making him awkward to handle, and that's no different here. I can't say that any of our deaths came from this lack of control directly. If anything, we just got unlucky like in this section with the three containers. After being pushed into the fire by the ledge, we were able to climb back up there, only to bounce off the ring container box somehow, forcing us to respawn back at the oh. checkpoint. It's honestly way easier to take the lower route here, so that's what we eventually did using Mario's jumping supremacy to cross several of the buildings, until we bounced off the wall again which led us back to the lower path. If anything, Mario footing into the wall was more of a hindrance to us than the stage itself. Like Chemical Plant, there was a ramp that we needed to wall jump up, only this time there weren't any spikes in the way making it a bit easier. Well, if I wasn't being an idiot, as for some reason I tried to glide up there with a wing cap instead. As I was re-watching the footage to write the script, I couldn't help but cringe. It's right there, just wall jump up the thing! With that, we've reached the final section of this already easy stage, as the goalpost trolls us, flying off with the debris caused by Ableist himself. We're forced to platform across the floating footholds or the while contending with the suction of the fire tornado. Whilst it can pull you in, I don't think Mario is actually affected in the same way as Classic Sonic. Seriously, he doesn't move at all here for some reason. All we have to do is take our time and use the wing cap to our advantage. In saying that, we did take an L, as I was a bit too impatient and ended up flying right into the eye of the storm, killing Mario on impact. Once we get past a certain point around the next checkpoint, the tornado's intensity picks up drastically. I'm almost certain that the tornado should be sucking us in. I could be remembering wrong, but I feel like it should. It is a blessing that it doesn't though, as the final few jumps weren't as difficult now that we could actually plan our movements, clearing Act 1 of Crisis City. As we finally enter what I consider to be the true modern era, rooftop runners received a significant glow up, since we last encountered it all the way back in Unleashed. Don't get me wrong, it's still the Spagonia that we all know and love. However, the vibes this time around are a lot more lively with the confetti falling from above, the many hot air balloons in the background, and some of the level objects as well all bring this festive atmosphere to life. I definitely preferred this version to the Unleashed Incarnation. It's just unfortunate that the stage layout itself doesn't really hold up in comparison. As is the trend with the classic versions of these modern stages, I couldn't help but notice just how flat this level was for the first half of the stage. Nothing here quite felt like a classic Sonic stage, as all that was required of us were a few blocky platforming segments, using these baskets to sit line across the buildings, or by using the crushers to platform up to the higher portions of the stage. This sort of design reminds me of the old Crash games, which are far more traditional in nature. The wing cap wasn't 
wasn't a necessity until we reached the university. There are a number of swinging axes that we have to avoid by jumping along the collapsing footholds. Instead though, we just glided over the things. This did work rather well until we were forced to groan pain because of the oncoming axe, meaning we had to finish the rest of this section in the intended way, using the spring to reach the next checkpoint. Upon easily evading the final few axes, we entered the wine cellar of Spigonia. In a bid to kill Mario, Eggman's mates will push these large barrels down the slope, forcing us to flee from them. Because Mario is so slow, we took damage, actually helping us in the process with the barrel passing right by him. Now, for the final few barrels, I discovered if you stand underneath the ledge that they will fall from and crouch, they will just end up rolling right by you. This allowed us to reach the next checkpoint, as we were quick enough to evade the barrels that were lurking towards us from the background. In this next section, the mechs will continue to throw large barrels our way with only the upper path being the safe route. To reach that door, we need to hit a switch, and this will lift the gear that prevents us from hitting the spring. The wind cap was a huge help in reaching the switch, however, because Mario is so slow, you're better off just damage boosting your way through. Unless you're content with taking the lower path, you won't really be able to evade the oncoming barrels, unless you're able to duck under specific gaps. Like an idiot, I somehow died when trying to collect our rings down the slope. We took damage, and I guess I panicked a little bit. This time around we took the bottom route, only to regret this choice immediately. This section is brutal having to evade the countless spike balls and spike crushers, when all we realistically had to do on the upper path was kill a few mechs. As long as you keep in mind that the top of the crushers are safe to touch, all we had to really do was wait until they dropped down before long jumping over the top of them, finally reaching the outside once more, and the last section of this death defying stage, the clock tower. In order to reach the end of the stage, we have to scale from the base of this tower to the face of the clock, so we can open the face forcing it to collide with one of the airships. Now if there was a dash pad at any point of the climb, this really wouldn't be as bad. Unfortunately, the path head is blocked off by a bunch of steep ramps, meaning our only way forward is to clip out of bounds with the wing cap, and hopefully snap onto the path above us. This only becomes more convoluted, when the green robots from the ending of the original rooftop run up here, slowing us down to a crawl as we have to avoid the lasers. Granted, they will move on after a while, and you can hide behind some of the structures that will save you from the lasers. Odds are though, you are taking a hit at some point. We got extremely lucky at this one ramp that is far too high for Mario to reach with a wall jump. Since there isn't an adjacent wall to bounce off of, I'm not sure what happened exactly, however Mario somehow gained some major airtime as he kicked off the wall. I think it might be because the wall jump itself was the triple jump and we had the wing cap activated at the time. Either way, it was such a lucky break, as we would have been stuck if that didn't end up happening. When we eventually reached the clock face itself, I decided discovered that it's simply impossible to do this in the intended way. Now Mario can grab a hold of the poles protruding from the hands of the clock. It's just that when he jumps, instead of hurdling upwards like classic Sonic, he just kind of falls. Now there are two springs placed on either side of the clock itself that will push Mario up to a floating platform. If we use the wing cap from here, we can fly into the centre and use the face of the clock as an indicator as to where we will need to ground pound. It's extremely precise but it is possible to straight up stomp into the hole which allows us to open the face through holding the X button. Just be careful though, there are bandits here that will face you so I do recommend you take them out beforehand. However with that, Axe 1 of Rootop Run is clearable with Super Mario. Planet Wisp is the final zone of the game, and it's a rather bizarre choice if I'm honest. I understand why it serves as the final stage with Sonic Colors being the most recent entry up until that point, but I think this game would have really benefited from an original stage of its own before taking on a time eater, as Planet Wisp's aesthetic doesn't really fit with being the final stage in the game. Overall, I really dislike this stage in particular. Not only is it extremely platform heavy, as are most of the later classic stages, since its colours, it revolves around one annoying mechanic, the Wisps. Now obviously, the Wisp would be here, it's a colour stage after all. It's just that true to its namesake, the next two acts pretty much become Wisp on the stage. In that one, we have to continuously use the Spike Wisp to reach higher pathways, and solve a variety of puzzles but their implementation never goes any deeper than that. So you're quite literally doing the exact same thing over and over again for 8 minutes or so. It's so boring. For the first minute of the stage, upon dying in a pit of spikes, we just flew over everything using the wing cap. That is until we reach the section where Eggman's industrial machinery would normally appear, except the textures refuse to load in again, meaning that we have to use the spike wisp and find our way over to the next section blind, which is as tedious as you might expect. For some reason, only the industrial buildings are affected by the glitch. The natural structures of Planet Wisp itself still load in for some reason. We did get pretty far with the Spike Wisp, however the moment it ran out we were unfortunately stuck because of the lack of textures forcing us to restart from the checkpoint. There is thankfully another checkpoint right above our spawn point. I figured that if I activated it, if we ever needed to restart the stage going forward, then the geometry should load in, which didn't work unfortunately. So the next several minutes were just me fumbling around in the dark so to speak. It's weird to explain how exactly to do this as it's like a puzzle with half the pieces missing. The collision is still there so you can theoretically pass the section, but it's near impossible to do unless you have encyclopedic knowledge on the stage layout. Unlike before, we were able to reach another spike wisp capsule when they first ran out, and thanks to this we managed to cling to the correct wall to bypass a little bit more of this section. From here I just held right and hoped for the best, and sure enough, the textures gradually became more frequent until we were back on solid ground. 
From this point on, you'll encounter these gears with a spike whist illustration on the face. You activate them by running along them or spin dashing as a spike whist, which will then move them out of place, either to help you reach a higher pathway, or to activate a switch that will load in a piece of geometry for you to climb on. It's a really nice idea, it's just that they never really do anything with it outside of what I just mentioned. And yes, Mario can spin dash by using the wisps, which kind of makes the wisps themselves the best mobility tool we have which is weird to think about. Anyway, upon falling down to the low route due to the clat's footholds, we need to yet again use the spike whist to tunnel our way back to the top pathway. For some reason, we did take damage from the egg pawn, maybe because Mario's head actually sticks out of the wisp. Regardless, we still had more than enough time to activate the switch, taking the spring to the next section of the stage. The buzzsaws here will damage you, although Mario does have enough height in his jumps to avoid him without any issues. Our next major obstacle of the stage proved to be a massive ramp that we need to run up. Thankfully, there is a red spring to grant Mario that boosts the speed, but it just isn't enough to clear the slope. Fortunately for us, there is an adjacent wall to the ramp, so all we really needed to do was jump as soon as we reached the vertical side of the wall, and use Mario's wall jump to reach the intended pathway. The rest of Planet Wisp at 1 revolves around activating those gears where the spike wisp again, something that Mario can easily do. The only thing that we have to make sure of, is that we maintain the power up long enough to clear this upward tilt after falling down the shaft. Even with the speed she's given to you here, if Mario loses the wisp, he won't have enough momentum to reach the top of the incline, forcing us to go all the way back, when we were inevitably too slow on the first go. With that, we've cleared the first stats of Planet Wisp, concluding part 1 with the knowledge that yes, it is possible to clear the classic stages of Sonic Generations as Super Mario, and with that, we've reached the conclusion of part 1 of this challenge. Overall, I definitely found it interesting that the challenge only got easier as we progressed through the different errors. The design philosophy of the newer classic stages differ quite drastically when you compared them with the likes of Green Hill and Chemical Plant, preferring to offer a more traditional platforming experience that suited Mario far more than the emphasis on momentum based gameplay. I assume they did this because the physics of Classic Sonic aren't one to one with his Genesis counterpart, although it only ended up helping us out in the long run. With the Classic stages now complete, join us again next week for part 2 of this run, when we take on the modern stages to see where it's possible to truly beat the game as Super Mario. In the future, I may come back to this in order to tackle the boss fights. From my testing though, a lot of them simply don't appear possible without us cheesing them. Even so, my curiosity for this challenge only really concerned the stages themselves, and not the other missions and bosses, so I'm comfortable with moving on for now. With that said, I've taken up enough of your time, so take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.